Hello, Antonis here. In this video, I will talk about how I created this particular stealth sprite starting in 3D code and rendering a key shot and post painting in Photoshop. This is a time lapse video, so I'll just go over with the commentary on my actions. So let's start. Alright, so we start with the ball, which I squish and pull sideways and all that, and just uh, then do a uniform scaling on that and this all stuff is um, I speed up about five times so the whole piece probably took me about two and a half hours to make all right so I'm just uh, really using the cut off tool to add the shape so the idea was to make this stealth type of a fighter that's kind of drone fighter that doesn't have a cockpit so no real visual like parts and yeah, I started out with that ball that I uh, cut and then the cut and cut and cut, uh, squish and squash, then use the cut off and then voxel height to uh, get these sharp edges that you can see on a contemporary stealth fight. And uh, I have on my second screen, I have uh, some reference of the airplanes, of the stealth airplanes. So, the idea was to make like something like oh, either a new, new future or you know, current tech. Uh, airplane and the when you think about it it, it quite uh, there is a combination of angular forms there and a little bit of smoothing in, in between that I wanted uh, to add so I'm going to this really simplified shapes so I really don't want to go do something overly complex like a spaceship or anything I wanted to do something that's fairly stylized. So you see here, I was uh, thinking that my uh, airplane was way too thin, so I had to uh, make it a bit thicker and edit it on top as a separate layer. I don't know, I added these parts and you can see that uh, I, I've taken the original piece and I used it as a back wing, uh, tail wing. I'm not sure how that part is actually called. Uh, and I use that uh, as that same, right. So what I'm trying to do now, I'm just thinking, yeah, still trying to shape it to find the shape that I like. And I think that overall, I was relatively happy about it. So I'm constantly, constantly referring to reference and how the wings are placed on the contemporary uh, stealth fighters. And, you know, um, just rotated the tailwind. So you can see now I'm trying to add some smoothness to this uh, angular parts. Uh, and then I decided to do the intakes. So I know a little bit about engines and I've seen a few documentaries about it. So I know some stuff how the engine is getting sucked out, sucked in into the airplane. And I think on the final version of the aircraft, I actually made the intakes a bit too large. This is the intakes that I really like that are right now, but I decided to go for bigger ones later, and then I thought like, oh well, it's kind of too late to change it, because I'm using um, uh, voxel height right now quite a bit, and uh, well, in the later versions when I no longer have any voxel, any hidden polygons, I can't really undo any changes. Uh, it gets really tricky to add stuff later on, and if Every now and then I press F12 to smooth out the whole model. All right, so right now I'm doing, I'm using the fill tool, I think, or smoothing tool with the line. I, I draw the line, then I press enter a few times and smooth smoothed out that part. Right, so I didn't do any bottom parts. I just, uh, it was supposed to be only the top down render and I didn't want to spend any time doing uh, other, other parts. Right, so I'm trying to be creative about the intakes. And uh, intakes, you can place intakes on the top of the aircraft, and you can place them on the bottom aircraft. It doesn't really matter uh, in the real life. They put them whenever they find it um, more convenient for the uh, aircraft. So it can be pretty creative about it. 
Right, so I think I wasn't happy about some type of shape, and that's that's going to happen quite a bit in this uh, you know time lapse. I would try to redo the same shape a few times, and sometimes I redo it, redo it, redo it, and then I say, okay, it's actually the previous version was better than you know, shouldn't have even touched it. Now uh, I'm not much happy about this angular tail, so I was trying to make it. I mean like right angle tail so I was trying to cut it under a 45 degree angle okay so here I'm trying to make uh, this section between the between the intakes so I want to have I want to have some type of a dip that goes in between and I'm filling out that space yeah it's a bit hard to comment on the <laughs> such a fast video but I'll try my best here all right so still trying to be careful about intakes, playing around, playing around. At one point I was thinking if I could teach the tail wings at all, but then I decided to keep them. Okay, hiding in. And the present, so sometimes I work in the orthogonal view, orthographic view, and then go back to perspective. It's pretty important to jump in between. I need the orthographic view to do uh, proper cuts, but then I need perspective view to understand how the airplane looks. That how it will actually look on the, on the final render. Just trying to figure out if I want to have a more interesting shape at front. I can see I was I was I was quite interested about this particular shape, but then. Uh, still a reference into the contemporary aircraft, uh, modern like technology. Uh, uh, don't, I don't want to overcomplicate the shapes. I want to keep them really simple and pretty straightforward. Right. Trying different materials as well, so we see it in a different shading. And the wind tails, I've got an in instance that's mirrored along the X uh, axis. So anything I do to the left or right wind uh, tail it gets mirrored. And here I'm trying to get a bit nicer shapes for the intakes, uh, a bit more angular shapes. looking for the shapes that I like. Hiding and uh, unhiding uh, all the hidden geometry. And here I'm like, at the stage where I'm just trying to figure out what's working and what's not. Just doing a lot of experimentation with hiding and unhiding. You never know what can what it can get all of a sudden so i'm trying to clean up the shapes right now so you, you can see in the end i wasn't going for uh, like a super clean shape it wasn't really the um the aim uh i knew that after i uh, light it and do some paint over so i can get away with some bumps and uh, imperfections on the model so i wasn't too worried about getting a few of those so right now i'm trying to smooth out the space in between index put in a line there and press and enter a few times so i wanted to do this combination again of uh, angular shapes and smoothed out uh, shapes Right, trying to see how it looks without the front element. And then I'm, I'm combined both parts, the front and back, into one mesh. So the intake, if you look at the intake, uh, or not an intake, but exhaust, uh, this kind of exhaust is possible. It's, it happens with other aircraft, so you don't need to stick out to the tire, uh, like a barrel type pipes out to make a realistic intake uh, uh, exhaust uh, sometimes it look like that 
Right, just trying different shapes with the windtails and different positioning. Cut on those. So at, at one point I found out that the back of my, the back wing of these aircraft is way too thick. So you'll see me later trying to cut out um, the back to make it thinner. I'm doing. I started to do it right now, but then I found out that actually to go to get I need to get it slimmer across the like whole wing, not just the back part. Oh yeah, now I'm trying to cut out that part, and it took me a lot of time, really. Uh, it's, you'll see me just jumping around and trying to find the proper cutting angle, and I'm doing and redoing this like many, many times, really. But the back part had to be much thinner, just the way the aircraft engineered. Well, you know, you match the pictures, you read a little bit about them, and get the idea. This one was, I was fairly happy about this particular shape. They will maybe like a half an hour they didn't get on, on this time lapse, where I also again did a little bit more cuts and uh, experimentation, but it didn't go. I didn't even put in the final fight. Those cuts and experimentation they didn't look better than what I had in the video. So I'm just doing those flippers at the back of the wings. Uh, I think there's a better name for them than other than flippers. Oh, there, there they go. I started to do the cuts. So I decided that this is a final model, pretty much. This is when I start to split out the mesh. This is really the final tweaking. So I'm using a split tool with uh, like minus 0.1 offset. Just trying to find some type of intelligent cuts for this model. Coming up the intakes. So I don't like certain cuts, so I'll try new ones. And you can see how many I try. This one actually wasn't that really great, and I stick to it. It was a bit of a mistake, to be honest. And it wasn't that great because it kind of goes around the edge, uh, but it should really uh, go opposite to the edge, like uh, uh, like breaking the form rather than going around the form. You know, that's kind of what really helps to make it be more functional and temporary. Uh, military design. We're going to use some broken shapes that don't try to be perfect to be perfectly tried perfect to each other. Okay, so I just tried to, cut, to put a couple stripes at, at the front. So I tried these different um, designs with the um, with the color. So like you know, you imagine like shuttle type of thing, like a NASA aircraft. So I was thinking if I could go. In go that way, that direction, but I didn't, I decided not to go that way. Uh, in the end, in the end of the day, it really looked better just being plain black, or like gray uh, design. So I've just isolated some of those parts and trying to see if I can get extra cuts that will look interesting. I was trying to break this ugly cut that they made that goes along the shape uh, with another cut and I couldn't really find a good way to do it so that was like all right i'll cut it i'll try to cut it down in the middle so maybe that will help 
So right now, even if you have like multiple parts, you can use this split tool across the all meshes. Okay, now right now we are jumping into Keyshot. So I have some pre-made materials from a uh, old projects. So I'll just try them on to see. And you can see I'm actually using the leather material. Uh, uh, I tried different plastics and all that. But they already worked out. Okay, also about the sky. This is actually my photo pack that I've done when I was flying from Oakland to Wellington. Uh, I did it from the from the um, Illuminator. And uh, there actually, I'll put a couple of promo codes in the description for you guys to download it for free. And if you want to support the channel, you can buy those uh, skies and you know, put your own airplane against it. There are plenty of skies to pick from. And here, uh, uh, if they don't, don't go really quick, but I used the custom HRI and tried to pick the right time. But it was it was like 8 a.m. in the morning, so the all light is pretty low, the sun is pretty low, and I'm trying to figure out the right type of bright, brightness and a contrast. It's a bit tricky in Keyshot. Actually, I really want to try to Octane. I'll probably be switching to Octane render in future so see that in future right so I decided to hide the back plate image so I could put it in a better position uh, put, put, put sun in a better position so right now the sun is definitely way too yellow so I needed to lift the sun, uh, sun up to like 8 30 a.m. something uh, and this particular is starting to look a bit better. I think yeah, I think I went ahead with uh, with this light um, sunlight sun position in the end. Right, and I rendered it just uh, on a pretty big resolution, but only it only took me like four minutes to render it. So it's a really super fast render, and I don't have that that a powerful machine, but. I didn't want to spend. I know the materials they run really fast, and they don't need to be. You don't need to spend too much time on that, especially because it's not like a really fleshed out concept. It's just a, something done really fast, and you can see I've done the mud material even faster. And I'm circling through other renders uh, that I've done, test renders I've done that were not included in this time lapse. Right, I'm putting all the layers in, so uh, the clouds were put in. Just as an image, um, the stuff was rendered as PNG and put on top. So I started to draw some lines, and uh, you can see here I'm using some uh, just picked up the reference of the stealth fighters, and I uh, just want to draw some lines that will look like it's a functioning military aircraft. And I did, again, I didn't spend too much time thinking over where I need to put them and all that. So, put a bunch of white ones, then I thought that probably adding a red, red, few red dots would be great, and you can see you'll simulate uh, doing some red dots across this uh, part white nose some white bits here and there and destroying a mask uh, just using the grunge brush to make it a bit crunchier And again, if you see a lot of uh, those photos of airplanes, uh, you don't need to draw any fire flames going from the exhaust. It's usually quite invisible. You can see so, sometimes you can see the uh, heat wave coming from the exhaust, but you know, not even then usually. So I'm just uh, the only really uh, post editing I did on this painting was. I was adding the unsharp mask on top just to make it slightly sharper. Again, I'm adding those red dots that really help to sell the image. Oh, 
uh, here I'm so I decided to add some grunge on top, just using a few brushes, uh, really simple brushes, I think they're like standard Photoshop brushes. And then uh, painting and erasing and then putting a different putting a different mask on. Well, this is actually the end of the video. And that's uh, how I did it. Thank you for watching. I hope you maybe you found something useful for your own work in progress. And uh, see you next time.